so let me draw a picture of this conducting wire because this wire is so thin, let me draw it a little bit bigger. So imagine this uh, sort of cylinder is a representation of the conducting wire. So what we do by connecting these leads from the power supply to the conducting wire is that we are applying a voltage across this conductor. We apply a voltage at this end called, let's say, zero, voltage of zero volt. Mm. And, sorry, I'm using V in too many ways. Um, well, I'll, I'll use this uh, stylized to the V when I'm in volt. Um, and let's say at this end, I'm applying voltage of, um, well, um, let's just say 10 volts, so, so, so that we have some specific number to talk about. So if this wasn't a conducting path, if there wasn't this conducting path between them, what would this mean? Uh, having zero volt here and 10 volt here. Like imagine that instead of this being a conductor, imagine this was like the capacitor setup where I have a plate on the left that's charged to zero volt and plate on the right that's also char that's charged to um, 10 volts. Like if there was a conducting path, what would putting this voltage difference mean? There's electric field between these two. How was that electric field set up? Oh, in fact, let me draw the electric. What direction would the electric field go? To the, let's see. To the left, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. From high voltage to low voltage. So it would mean there's some kind of electric field between them. And why is there electric field between them? I mean, you could say it's because there's voltage difference, but um, so what, that there's a third feature that having this voltage difference involves. Charge separation. Yeah, there's a charge. On this positive plate, there should be some positive charges here. And on this negative plate, there should be some negative charges here. And um, so that's the electrostatic picture. When we are now dealing with a circuit, where it might not be at static equilibrium anymore, what we are saying is, all right, instead of these two being separated, now they are connected by a conducting material. And I want to look at what should change now that these two ends are connected by a conductor. So this is where you have to um, have some constraints given to you. So you know, in static electricity, essentially what we said was, if, this, if we are dealing with the static electricity, what we would say is that this voltage is not a known quantity. Now, initially there might have been zero and 10 volts. Initially there might have been negative and positive charge separation. But in static electricity, what we say is, well, after this initial setup, we are going to remove our hands, let whatever happens happen, and then look at it again when it, everything's have come to static equilibrium. In other words, we are saying we are not going to apply voltage anymore. Let's see what happens. What would happen is negative charge and positive charge will attract each other. It will be on net, neutral all the way throughout, be at zero volt, have zero electric field. Like that would be the situation, right? So that's what we did in static, when we, whenever we are dealing with a static equilibrium, now we are changing the terms. Now we are saying that, no, we are going to continue to apply zero volts and 10 volts at these two ends. And that's uh, kind of what we are doing with this. Um, in other words, uh, let me change the numbers so that it actually, what I'm saying in words matches physically what I can make happen. So let's say we do this, I'm trying to apply 0.5 volts. And let me fiddle with the second knob a little bit. And what we are saying is that, so now there will be situations where if I'm trying to apply 0.5 volts, I can't 
physically I'm just not able to apply 0 0.5 volts. But uh, what we are in circuit to what we want to deal with now is deal with the situations where the power supply is trying to supply 0 0.5 volts and the rest of the setup is set up in such a way that the power supply is able to. If, uh, uh, sorry, move this. Power supply is able to. So I'm trying to apply 0 0.5 volts between these two ends of the wire, and I can. So, so that's the situation, um, so that's the uh, change in condition that we are now doing. So before, what we said was, um, uh, so before, you know, it's the static equilibrium condition. This is what we are holding through, that charges don't move. Uh, when we get to circuits, now we are getting rid of that, and we are holding something else constant. And depending on the problem, this will change, but for this initial discussion, let's say we are holding change in voltage, that we are holding this difference in voltage constant. So what else, uh, um, if we are holding this constant, um, what changes? Or actually better, what doesn't change? When you look at it here, based on saying that the voltage difference is constant, can you say some, can you say if there's something here that should not change? As in, you know, so the charges and the electric field, we drew them based on electrostatic picture. Um, is there, so let's just go through them one by one. The electric field, should it remain the same or should it, um, should it somehow change? So, if your intuition says that electric field in here should be zero, I want you to think through it carefully. So, yeah, so we are not saying that it's a static equilibrium anymore. So I don't want you to go to this anymore because driving these two properties, it depended on assuming static equilibrium. We are saying, I don't know what's happening to static equilibrium. So if, you are in, you are, if your intuition says that electric field should be zero in here, what I want you to do is I want you to fall back on the definitions. So this is the definition that relates the voltage difference to the electric field. This, this was the definition of voltage. Uh, the reason we call this definition is because it, it never fails. It's always true. So voltage difference from A to B is defined as this integral from A to B of the electric field dot product with DL. The picture that I'm sketching here, having a non-zero voltage difference from one end to the other end. Here, having a non-end voltage difference from one end of the conductor to the other end of the conductor. There's 0 0.5 volts right there. Is that consistent with having zero electric field inside the conductor? Yeah, it's not. So here, now we have to say, um, because there's a voltage difference, there is actually electric field inside the conductor. So that's one of the things that change, the, or actually doesn't change <laughs> from static situation. So, so this electric field that we said should be there um, in the static equilibrium situation based on the fact that there's a voltage difference here, that electric field remains. So it's still there. So here, what we are doing is we are doing what we needed to do to maintain this voltage difference. So what do we need to do to, um, so let me put it this way. Um, so if we have the same voltage separation, I mean voltage difference, and we have this electric field, um, that must mean that we still have this charge separation because other, without this charge separation, then how will we have electric field? I mean, to have non-zero electric field, I must have some charge accumulation somewhere, right? Now, uh, what happens with these charges? Like imagine what happens in the next moment. Do these charges just remain where they are or do something, let's say the you know, positive charges, they don't move, they are you know, 
protons or whatever. What happens with these negative charges in the next moment? They move, right? So um, these negative charges, they will feel, um, they will feel force from this elect electric field. So they will actually start to move this way. Negative charges will start to move to the right here, right? In other words, you are losing a negative charges here. And uh, that also means you are actually losing positive charges here also. Because when negative charges finally reach this end, then by that same amount, this end is that much. Um, it, it has less net charge there. Okay? So what are we, what are we uh, um, so there must be something that we are doing to continue to maintain this voltage difference and continue to maintain this electric field as we are losing these charges. Guesses? There's a supply of charges that's coming in. That's really what this power supply is doing. So that's why the moment the power supplies, well, sorry, I have to disconnect it from the correct place. Hmm. You know, I don't think there's a place I can disconnect it from, because if I do, the, the um, display will go to zero. Um, but that's what this power supply is doing. So if I was uh, uh, measuring voltage difference at this end with uh, another voltmeter, then um, the moment I turn off the power supply, the voltage difference will go to zero. The moment the power supply doesn't supply charges anymore, it'll go to zero. So, so to maintain this setup, there must be a continuous supply of um, negative charges that are coming in to replace the charges that are being lost as they move from one end to the other. And here, there must be continuous um, sort of extraction of these negative charges from this end so that as negative charges come in, they don't um, make this end net uh, net charge zero, that this end remains net charge positive. So there has to be a continuous flow of this charge here. And that's uh, um, this flow of charge, mm. this flow of charge here is what we refer to as current or um, electric current. and. Um, so this is now what we need to explicitly deal with. You can look at it this way. When we said um, in static electricity, assuming static equilibrium, another way to say the same thing is to say that the same thing would be to say that the current movement of charge is equal to zero. That's what we were assuming before. And now, as we get to circuit, we are going to say uh, my current it might not be zero. In fact, it's definitely not zero in a situation like this. 